Hi folks, we're in the middle of a production run, 400 pieces, which is pretty high for us. And I thought this is an awesome Wednesday widget. Why? Because we're, we're smart machining, we're smart manufacturing. We got a Tor Tormach 1100 with the ATC, the Carve Smarts on the Orange Vice, dual station, eight parts at a time. This thing is just banging stuff out right now. Uh, Jared's running another job, I've been doing other work. This is what gets me, like I love this. This is so awesome. So let's enjoy some machining footage of this thing running. But let's also look at the Fusion uh, 360 CAD and CAM real quick uh, with an emphasis on showing G54 and G55. So how we handle the offsets of having uh, the two different workstations in the same vice. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. We're in between setups right now. So We've got our saw cut blanks. By the way, I'll show you in a minute, but had I done this again, I would have saw, I ordered material in the longer side. So we cut it along this edge because the way we're doing it now is we're holding the first op here. So we have to deck these blanks off so that they're all exactly the same length. Otherwise, what will happen is they will pull out because the four of them won't be held equally by the soft shell. And here's what we end up with. Pretty cool little logo, right? So, grab four more. Cycle start. So if you notice, we've got some aluminum plates laying over the orange vice. The backstory there is uh, somebody not to name any names, um, I was repairing an airline behind the mill and when I took a panel off I ripped out one of the feed wires to the ATC and so it was giving me, ATC was giving me an error and I was like, hmm, I wonder what's wrong, thinking it was you know, something like it was going to be a big deal and I popped that cover off and sure enough it was just, uh, again, a loose wire that I stuck back into a screw terminal, but uh, I'm a little protective of this new orange vice so I thought I'll just drop a couple pieces of aluminum on it in case it accidentally drops a tool. But uh, we've been running, I would think, probably two or 300 tool changes in the last couple of days, and it's been fine. And it is, it, that is great. It took us a while when we got it to get this thing dialed in, uh, but it's been pretty solid since then. CarveSmart kind of reminds me of Maritool. CarveSmart, I think, is a younger company, at least the CarveSmart side of what they're doing. Uh, but everyone's using them. It's like with Maritool, everybody loves them. What they do is great. We were excited to, to get ours, and we're big fans of soft jaws, and I love the monster jaws. I really do, the standard sort of soft jaws. But these CarveSmarts, uh, are there, you know, they're so fast to change, which I like, the repeatability I like. Uh, we've got some of their hard jaws. I want to grab the surface grinder and grind some shallow steps into them. And then I want to set up some fixture types with, you know, different types of mighty bites in them. So I, uh, I'm really excited uh, to get them. And we're going to move this 20 inch vise over to the Haas when it comes. So I'm trying to get a order of 16 inch from Eric as well, or from Orange Voice, ra Orange Vice rather. So we'll let this uh, we'll let this fast forward with uh, some GoPro footage here, and uh, we'll take a look. But again, I, I think this is so cool. Uh, one of the things I'm passionate about is not just machining, but it's the business side of it. And we, I have to not only make money, but I have to be conscious of, of how I spend the money. And for me, I'm excited we bought the Haas. I cannot wait to see what we are able to do with it. But this machine that you're looking at, loaded and decked with tooling, tool holders, work holding, everything, is like 22 grand. And, and you can probably do it for 15 if you do your own enclosure, uh, maybe a little bit more, because in this case, you do need the tool changer to show this off. But it's sitting here making money. I think that's friggin' awesome. In this case, you know, these are brass keychains. They look great. This isn't aerospace tolerances. You know, don't, there's no reason, in my opinion, to tie up a $150,000 machine doing cake work like this. So for me, that's pretty cool. And that's why I'm curious to see what the future brings to us. But uh, 
I, I like the Tormox for a lot of reasons, including where they got us, including the training classes, and including the parts they make. But we've got, you know, I've got four Tormox machines. I want to get uh, ATCs on the 440 so that those, th those things can be doing this kind of work. I, frankly, even better with uh, 10K RPMs, and you don't need the horsepower for this stuff, and let them just crank away. Is just finishing up some uh, chamfers on the very tips of these things, but uh, how awesome is that, folks? There she is. Great finish. I'm happy with how it looks. So aside from uh, ordering stock differently next time to cut it on a different dimension or different side, that way we don't have to worry about the soft jaws holding it securely. The other thing we could do is we could spend more time optimizing this code. And in this case, it might be a good trade-off, but what we've been doing is really just letting this run. And if we see something while it's running, we'll kind of tweak it and update it. But from a job shop standpoint, we're just let it go. We're doing other stuff. So yes, timing matters and efficiency matters, but I have less pressure to get this cycle time down from 25 minutes to 19 minutes. Uh, because again, we're doing other stuff and uh, it's, you know, I guess we're not at max. We're not using every machine at max spindle. So I like that. It's a different philosophy. The more you push this, the harder it is to make sure your soft jaws hold this perfectly because we're not holding it by too much. So I guess it's a little real world dose of, sure, it'd be great if I could optimize this and spend the time to do it. But the reality is, let's get them made. Let's go take a look at the Fusion uh, CAD and CAM. We've got our first stop here, which is the solid slugs. And notice where my work coordinate system is. It's in the bottom right. So those orange vices have a center fixed jaw. And so that doesn't move the outside to move. So if you'll notice the left side operation, the work coordinate system is in the bottom left corner, bottom right corner, sorry. And the other one, it's in the bottom left. So again, you're referencing those two. Awesome. We just do a regular uh, cam on, on these, like the 2D adaptive. We right click, edit. Instead of uh, patterning it, we just pick the four chains. It makes it really easy. Patterning is a powerful way to do things though. And I turned off the first instance so you can see what the soft jaw looks like. Nothing crazy. The same thing on the right side. It's a 3D adaptive, a horizontal. This is all very similar cam, in fact, to our, uh, the video we just published on making the Fusion F. Did you just hear that in the background? And what else? You'll notice that these are even on the wrong height plane. Doesn't matter because the coordinate system here, Z0, Z0. And then the magic is under the second, actually we did it opposite. We did the first one as G55, which is weird because you would think, I would think the left would be 54 and the right would be 55. But the left one, if you right click on the operation, go to edit and under the last tab post process see this wcs offset change it to two uh, zero and one are both g54 i have no idea why and then two is 55. the same thing uh, so this one would be zero or one i'm sure zero that's fine then 
we wanted it to work on both sets of parts uh, before it does a tool change. So what you do is hold down control and click both of these ops. And when you go to post, it gives you this warning, that's okay. Check reorder to minimize tool change. So it's gonna use say tool 31 on the left side and then tool 31 on the right side, then go up and do a tool change. Uh, let's walk over and show you quickly how you set the G54 and G55 on the Tormach. Here's a video, Byron Hatfield, who has a great YouTube channel, and he did a video on G54 and G55. I would absolutely encourage you to watch that card here if you want to see more. And I believe he did a follow-up video, yeah, right here, Fusion 360 Multiple Work Cord Systems Part 2. Some really interesting stuff on how you can pattern things uh, and you know gain some efficiency out of doing G54, G55, flipping parts over, uh, all that good stuff. So definitely check out Byron's channel and subscribe. To set G54 and G55, take a look. See how right here in PathPilot it says G54? We've got our Heimer in the machine. So in this case, the XYZ0 is the top inside edge of this jaw. So we'll come over and we would do a normal edge finding top for Z0, the front for Y0, and the inside for X0. Then what we do is in the MDI screen, just type G55 and hit enter. And you'll notice the status updates here to G55. Jog over, and I can't do it right now because I got a part in there, but you would do the same thing, actually take this out, and you would find the top for Z0, the front for Y0, and this side for X0. That's all you've got to do. I will tell you though, be careful and remember what your status is, because when you start playing around with G54 and G55, you will get frustrated and confused you know, tomorrow when you come back and you post a program out to G54, but your machine is in G55, great way to crash the machine. So I like to generally get in the habit of, when I'm done, go back into G54. Obviously when you run the code, it will update this accordingly. In fact, we can take a look here you can see it's calling G55 right there for the first operation. So the code will toggle it back and forth as necessary. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something. Take care, see you next Wednesday.